ok. Good morning, um, so welcome to today's lecture. So, we were discussing about basics of solid state NMR and how we can apply this in structural biology. So, if you remember in the previous class we have discussed the differences between solid and liquid state NMR. And the one of the major difference that we have that in solution state most of the polarization, trans, polarization transfer happens through J coupling because of the fast tumbling of the molecules these interactions that are present are averaged out and that is why we have a prom, the dominant mode of magnetization transfer is via J coupling. However, in solid because of lack of motion we have a dipolar coupling and quadrupolar coupling and that leads to anisotropic interactions. However, in liquid, in liquid state or solution state these anisotropic interactions are averaged out we have only isotropic interaction. Then we looked at that if we want to achieve high resolution we have to adopt one technique called magic angle spinning. Uh, which mimics the tumbling like situation what we have in solution and due to this magic angle spinning we can achieve sharper line. One other important difference is that we, we looked at that inherently we detect on proton in liquid state. However, because of the broad lines of proton we detect on carbon. Nowadays with because of fast spinning we can also detect on proton or when we spin dilute it with deuterium then we can also detect on proton. But at moderate speed the mode of detection is 13 C however mode of detection in liquid state is, is proton. And because of low gamma the sensitivity of 13 C is, is, uh, is low and that is why we have a low sensitivity. So, 13 C detection and broad line are kind of signature of solid state NMR. However, in, in liquid state we have a proton detection and that is how we have a high sensitivity. So, just to summarize what we discussed the cross polarization and magic angle spinning these are the two basic building block of solid state NMR. Then we, we discussed about decoupling that basically enhances the resolution and to, to recouple like a, then we use recoupling to in reintroduce the lost interaction that we had uh, because of anisotropy. So, we also then we use 2D correlation spectrum spectroscopy how we can employ this 2D correlation spectroscopy for resonance assignment. We br briefly looked at the carbon carbon correlation 2D spectrum and carbon nitrogen 2D experiment and today we are going to now discuss in more detail how we can use carbon carbon correlation, carbon nitrogen correlation for, for resonance assignment. Just to remember we at the moment we are talking about spinning at moderate speed not very high speed more than 60 kilohertz. So, we are talking about 10 kilohertz, 15 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz where dominantly we are detecting on carbons and therefore, we are trying to look at the carbon carbon, carbon nitrogen correlation spectrum. So, we introduce to you the 2D carbon carbon correlation which is known as a proton driven spin diffusion PDSD or di, uh, DAR which is dipolar assisted resonance recoupling sequences. So, what we are doing we are transferring the proton magnetization to carbons relative respective carbon and we are trying to establish the carbon carbon correlation that is what these two experiments does it. So, just to walk through you to the PDSD experiment that we have here. So, we start with a 90 degree magnetization which we see here. Now, 90 degree magnetization first polarized spins into xy plane. Then using this cross polarization condition we transfer the magnetization on carbon. Now, my magnetization at this stage is on carbon and for doing this cross polarization just to remind you again we are we are just getting this Hartmann hand match, matching condition in the rotating frame so that we can transfer the magnetization from proton to carbon. So, now at this stage my magnetization is on carbon. So, then we are introducing this 2D formalism where we are in, incrementing it uh, to achieve 
the the another indirect dimension and that is how you see T1 here. During that time we are decoupling the protons. So, TPPM is 2 pulse phase modulation pulse sequence is one of the decoupling sequence that we had discussed earlier, one of the decoupling sequence that decouples the proton carbon coupling. So, then after that we now encoded indirectly into carbon dimension. Here during this period we are mixing the carbon carbon magnetization, it is similar like a nose, we are mixing it in the in the jet direction. So, here is a 90 degree pulse and here again a 90 degree pulse. So, we are just like a whatever we have seen 3 pulse experiment in liquid state you have 1 pulse, 2 pulse and 3 pulse. This is similar like 3 pulse experiment, but here we are using dipolar coupling for mixing actually in NOSI also we use weak dipolar coupling. So, here we are mixing the magnetization and because of that the magnetization can transfer say from C alpha to CO. C alpha to C beta, C beta to C gamma, C alpha to C gamma depending upon how long we mix it. Now, mixing without any additional irradiation if it is done that is called PDSD proton driven spin diffusion. Proton driven because it is driven by protons, protons are contributing to the magnetization and spin diffusion because spin is diffusing transferring its magnetization to other spins like a C alpha is transferring to CO, C alpha is transferring to C beta and C gamma. So, that is a PDSD. However, many times this transfer is not that effective. So, what we do? We apply additional pulse on proton which is we, we, which is of order of either magnetic uh, like uh, spinning speed or half of the mag, uh, spinning speed that assist the recoupling. The transfer is assisted that is how it is called dipolar assisted resonance decoupling. So, it decouples this facilitates recoupling and the transfer of magnetization from one spins it becomes better C alpha to CO, C alpha to C beta, C beta to C gamma. So, using this simple carbon carbon correlation spectrum we are now establishing the spectrum. This is kind of the parameters that are used. So, here we have two axis say proton axis we are starting from here because proton has a high gamma so it has high sensitivity. So, we are excite protons using 90 degree pulse what is the typical power like if you are using 2.45 microsecond of pulse that corresponds to 100 kilohertz. Okay, so, what we are doing in experiment little more experimental details we are exciting protons with a 90 degree pulse. The duration of this pulse is 2.5 microsecond that means the power that we are applying on proton is 1 divided by 2.5 into 10 in multiplied with 4 and microsecond that goes here. So, that will be 10 to power 6 divided by 10 that is 10 to power 10 to power 5 hertz and that is actually 100 kilohertz right. So, this is the power that we are applying on proton for exciting proton. And why we are exciting proton? Because it has high gamma, it is more sensitive. Next, our job is to establish a cross polarization condition. Now, cross polarization simultaneously we are applying a pulse on proton and on carbon with varying power. So, if you look at here, we are typically having 67.5 kilohertz, here we are having 50 kilohertz, and duration of that cross polarization is 700 microsecond. Now, if you remember here omega c we have is 50 kilohertz right and omega h we are what having 67.5 kilohertz. So, if we and omega r suppose we are keeping 17.5. So, that that becomes omega h minus omega c equal to omega r right. So, that is what conditions we are achieving it here Hartman hand matching condition duration of this cross polarization is 700 microsecond. Now, our magnetization is on 
carbon during this corporation. This is called ramped CP because of Rh inhomogeneity we ramp it say 70 to 100 or 80 to 100 this is called ramp CP right. So, we are ramping we are changing the power typically power applied on proton is here uh, and power applied on carbon that should have matching this condition omega h minus omega c equal to omega r then we have a Hartmann hand matching condition in rotating condition. We are back on carbon we are doing the T1 encoding the frequency here on carbon while applying a decoupling. So, decoupling power is 90 kilohertz this is called high power decoupling the TPPM is one of the pulse sequence that we discussed in the last slide. So, applying this 90 kilohertz we are decoupling protons while encoding on carbon and then we are applying here again a pulse of, 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 of 90 uh, on carbon of 50 kilohertz which duration is about 5 microsecond. During this time we are mixing the carbon carbon polarization magnetization of about 20 millisecond. So, this can be done without this pulse or it can be done with with this pulse. If we are doing without this pulse that is PDSD, if we are doing this pulse that is called DAR. So, the power we are applying is omega r right 17.5 kilohertz and that extra power that, that we are applying on proton that facilitates the mixing, it enhances the mixing capacity and then finally we apply a 90 degree pulse on carbon of 50 kilohertz. We decouple the protons here um, using high power decoupling and we acquire on carbon. So, this is the typically we are establishing carbon carbon correlation using one of these two pulse sequence either PDSD or DAR. Wonderful. So, what we get? Here we are getting now carbon carbon correlation spectrum, it is similar like an OGA spectrum. Here you see 13 C carbon frequency, here 13 C carbon frequency, here we have a diagonal peak and these are off diagonal peak that shows correlation. So, here if we if you remember your chemical shifts here are threonine C alpha C beta. So, this is threonine C beta here we have a threonine C alpha and then if you go around this axis we have a threonine C gamma. Here are the region for serine and we can have here alanine so uh, sorry isoleucine you can see isoleucine uh, gamma um, delta gamma gamma 2 beta alpha. So, isoleucine you can establish all the way like here say if you we go to diagonal peak here is alpha of isoleucine then beta of, of isoleucine here then gamma 2 ga, uh, gamma 1 and delta. Looking at these chemical shifts you can identify spin systems and if you start mixing more and more the neighboring residue will start contributing what we have here. So, you can even get it near neighbor effect. So, like a C alpha of magnetization of, of this I residue can be also transferred to I minus 1 residue uh, CO or C alpha depending upon how long we mix it. So, it not gives only spin system specific assignment, but also near neighbor assignments or even little medium range assignment depending upon how we mix it. So, we need to just vary this mixing time 20 millisecond is short distance uh, correlation if we increase to 150 millisecond it will be neighboring residue if we increase to 500 millisecond even more some some uh, long range 800 millisecond even long range. So, we can establish all these carbon carbon correlation using DAR or PDSD that helps us in resonance assignment of, of this peak spectrum. So, I am taking another example of say here K 59 K is, is lysine 59. So, we have a C alpha here if you just follow these lines. So, C alpha here in, in red you can get a C beta lysine has C gamma C delta C epsilon. So, we can assign all those and C epsilon comes around 41, 42 ppm, C beta comes around 35 ppm. So, if you know from BMRB values um, of different amino acid you can essentially analyze it. You see here epsilon of, of lysine is coming around 42, beta is coming here, deltas, gammas and all those are coming there and which can be assigned. So, I am showing you one of the uh, one of the publication from Adam Lange group 
where they have used this B, BACA back to fill in, they got a beautiful spectrum carbon carbon correlation spectrum and you can see it is as beautiful as NOGI spectrum. You can use this PDSD based experiment or DAR based experiment for resonance assignment. So, these are all short range correlation you can see here is uh, isoleucine C alpha C beta, serine C alpha C beta, then Q B and Q C alpha C beta. If you go here this region phenyl alanine you go this region is for alanine C alpha C beta, here are isoleucine this is serine uh, sorry threonine C alpha C gamma. So, all these correlation one can easily establish from C alpha to C beta to C gamma to C delta here C beta to C gamma C delta here are deltas delta can be also shown here like you can see all the way going from top to bottom we can assign this spin system specific assign uh, resonance assignment or near neighbor assignments by doing couple of, of months of assignment. This is beautiful spectrum and can be used for starting the assignment. But that is not enough we have to establish this was only carbon carbon line spectrum. So, we have to, to establish heteronuclear assignments for a like a carbon nitrogen experiment like we have a typically HNCO or HNCA kind of experiment in liquid state. Similarly, in solid we can do this by, by again polarization transfer. So, to explain to you how we do it I am just explaining you see ith spin system this is i minus 1 spin system we start polarization from hn using dipolar coupling we transfer to like through bonded connected n15 that nitrogen of amide then we transfer to c alpha and we establish the correlation between nitrogen and c alpha this will be direct dimension here will be indirect dimension so we are establishing a correlation n c alpha and we are detecting on carbon while nitrogen is on indirect dimension. So, we have a 2 d of n c a. Similarly, rather going in this direction we can go in backward direction. So, this will give i minus 1 correlation h n we are transferring to n 15 going to c o. Now, i minus 1 correlation can be established here and that will be kind of HNCO experiment that we have in liquid. So, this is HNCA and this is HNCO, but in solid since we are not utilizing proton. So, we call it NCA and NCO. Here we are two times transferring the magnetization from HN to N, N15 and N15 to CO or C alpha. This is called double CP experiment. Ek CP yaha, dusra CP yaha. First CP here, second CP here that is what it is called double CP DCP double CP experiment. So, schematic is something like this we are starting with proton and transferring to uh, transferring here to carbon here we are starting here. So, we can get I correlation ith correlation we can go back and we can get I minus 1 correlation in NCO and the pulse sequence is something like this. So, let me walk through uh, you to the pulse sequence. We are again exciting the protons using 90 degree pulse. The, uh, then we are doing the first CP, we are transferring the magnetization from proton to nitrogen. So, first CP directly attached protons magnetization are transferred to nitrogen. Now, magnetization is on nitrogen. Then we are indirectly, uh, like in indirect dimension, we are encoding nitrogen. So, this is the T1. Then we are using another CP here for transferring. But before that we are just decoupling protons as well as using 180 degree pulse we are decoupling carbon as well when uh, the nitrogen is evolving. So, then uh, when we are at this stage we will do use the double CP like uh, the second CP and we transfer the magnetization from nitrogen to proton while we decouple again proton uh, sorry nitrogen to carbon while decouple proton and then we detect on carbon. So, this is our T 2 and we are again decoupling protons. So, these are the two high power decoupling we are using one when it, uh, T 1 is being encoded when T 2 is being encoded and during this transfer we are using the C w decoupling. So, that is why we have a one dimension nitrogen 15 another dimension carbon 13 
and uh, depending upon how we want to transfer the magnetism the same pulse sequence where we shift our the carrier frequency the NCA correlation can be established or NCO correlation can be established. Okay, same pulse sequence just you have to shift the frequency. If you are shifting on CO we can establish the CO correlation I minus 1 NCO correlation when we are shifting to 55 ppm then we can establish the CA correlation so that would be NCA correlation and when we are shifting to say 175 ppm it would be NCO correlation. So, that is how we do it and when we do we get a beautiful spectrum this is from Chris Geronic group they have done on, on some, um, uh, some fibril protein you can see now beautiful again NCO correlation you are getting this dimension is N15 this dimension is carbon 13 and here for each amino acid I minus 1 correlation we are getting here for each amino acid ith correlation we are getting. So, here is like you know this is CO of, of say 137 this is CA of 137. Similarly, um, we, we can get for valine. So, you can see CO of, of 1 um, like um, 122 valine. So, similarly you can establish one I minus 1 correlation coming from here and ith correlation coming from here just by looking at this and using couple of those carbon carbon correlation spectrum you can assign resonance assign all of you can identify all of these correlation beautiful. But that is not enough right we just did 2D we need to establish uh, further correlations to get a uh, resonance specific assignment. So, what we can do the can we fuse this first we perform the carbon carbon correlation now we are performing the nitrogen carbon correlation can we fuse a little bit this and get a more magnetization transfer that is what these experiments do NCACX and NCOCX. So, what we are doing here starting with a proton we are transferring to N15 encoding here and then, then we can transfer to CO but we do not stop it here let it mix whatever we are doing in PDSD or DAR. So, we can fuse these two sequence the 2D HNCA correlation with PDSD or DAR correlation. So, now my magnetization does not stay, uh, stay at CA it can go all the way to C beta, C gamma, C delta. So, that will be called NCA CX, CX means C beta, C gamma, C delta and all those. NCO CX analogous to like our HNC uh, this is like HNCACB, this is like HNCOCACB. So, here we are transferring uh, starting from proton, transferring from nitrogen going to I minus 1 CO and then we are mixing that. So, we can get the I minus 1 C alpha, C beta, C gamma and C delta. The third one can be also depending upon how we are starting. So, starting from say um, H alpha, C alpha, N then going to CO and then mixing with CX. So, this is uh, this is like a like HCA, NCO, CACB something like that. So, I minus 1 all the correlation we are getting when we are starting from H alpha to C alpha to N 15 going to I minus 1 residue CO, C alpha, C beta, C gamma, C delta. So, these are these can be 2D version as well as 3D version depending upon how many axis or frequency we are labeling it. Now, using all these series of these experiments we can almost achieve a liquid like uh, correlation spectrum which can be used in a similar manner for resonance assignment. Just one of the example that I am showing here. So, NCOCX and NCSCX. So, if you look at here it was NCA experiment, but when we did PDSD, NCSCX PDSD. Now, we, we are getting also correlation from C beta, C gamma and C delta. So, take any amino acid that we want K60 here you see it is C beta is coming here, C gamma and all those. So, here similarly one can take valine here, valine you get a, uh, valine 53 or something like that C gamma, C delta and all those. So, glycines just one peak coming here right. So, you can establish putting NCOCX, NCACX even using 2D you can achieve lots of lots of resonance assignment because 2D can be done in few hours, 3D will take days. 
So, you can collect a good 2D and that should be enough for resonance assignments of few of these peaks. So, here I show an example how you can use your DAR or PDSD with NCSEX and NCOCX and establishing the correlation. So, you can start from say th uh, threonine C alpha C beta, then you can go to C gamma, here you come and find it is a C beta, then here from here you can come C alpha, here you can find the N C alpha, we can go here and find it out C O um, of my M I minus 1 residue. So, this helps us, facilitates us in working. You can take another example like here uh, in this region we can get an alanine. So, alanine C alpha is here, C beta is here. Now, we can come all the way, we get N 15 of this, we can get I minus 1 of this and similarly using N C S C X, N C O C X we can assign each of these resonances that are present. This is a few weeks or maybe a month job depending upon how experience you, how, how much experience you have. This can be used for resonance assignment. Now, people did not stop it there, they developed a series of sequence. So, one of the uh, sequence that I am showing from Tata Gopinath and Vagilia that developed the carbon 13 edited CC experiment and 15 edited NC experiment on NCSCX experiment like NCSCX, NCOCX, NCSCX, uh, uh, NCA, NCO, NCSCX, NCOCX, NCSCAB and many of these uh, where sometimes it is also labeling the protons. So, this is a gallery of experiment that, uh, that they have developed and these can be essentially used for, for um, for doing resonance assignment. Tata Gopinath used multiple equations. So, in, in actually in the same sequence, he can detect various of various, uh, various experiment like CSCX, NCSCAB, NCSCX, NCOCX. So, in sim, same experiment at the different time point, you can detect it various experiments. So, you save lots of time because these are low sensitive experiment. So, this is a beautiful exposition of, of Tata Gopinath and Vagilia tried to attempt it to cut short uh, the times like cut drastically the acquisition time and facilitating resonance assignments in a shorter possible time. Now, we have to if we record all this series of experiment, you can take a strips right. So, you can take a strips and you can sequentially work C alpha to C beta, C beta to C gamma using various experiment like a NCSCX, NCOCX, CANCO. NCSU all these are you can see in different colors these are there and similarly like liquid state you can you can use this strip for resonance assignment. So, 128 we can work to 127 we can work to like using this assignments 126, 125, 124, 123. So, if we assign all those now we have the value of C alpha, C beta, C o then what is the obvious next step then we can get these, these uh, assignments and we know that these chemical shift are quite deterministic of the secondary structural information. So, we know from our chemical shift that C alpha has only glycine right. So, uh, however, these spin system like alanine, therine, uh, threonine, serine they have C alpha, C beta uh, and they have a characteristic C alpha, C beta. So, it helps us in resonance assignment. Glycine has C alpha only at 45, alanine has C alpha around 52 and C beta around 22 just two spin system. Threonine C beta is lower than C alpha, serine again three C beta is lower than C alpha. So, using all those signatures we can start the assignment, these are start point or check point. Okay. Similarly, uh, C alpha, C beta and C gamma gives most of other amino acids, histidine, tryptophan, tyrosine, phenylalanine are difficult to identify because they have a broad line, but then we can combine their or aromatic um, chemical shift to find it out. And then looking at these distribution of different chemical shift for different amino acid that we have seen, it becomes quite easy for assigning using the, the spectrum of 2D or that we have combined here like a 2D, we can start from like that is what I always sh in showing you started from threonine, it has a distinct chemical shift, serine has a distinct, alanine has a distinct, 
glycine again comes somewhere here. So, you can use these distinct chemical shift for resonance assignments and then you once you have the resonance assignment then subtract the sequence corrected random coil chemical shift of say C alpha C beta plot along the sequence. So, here what I am showing you again from Adam Lange group the delta C alpha minus delta C beta. So, these are C alpha and C beta sub, subtracted the random coil chemical shift you plot along the sequence and then if these values are negative that you know that these are beta sheet. So, this protein that I am showing you is in rich of beta sheet you, you can see using the secondary chemical shift you can plot along the sequence and you can find it out what is the secondary structural topology similarly like liquid state. So, we got a secondary structural topology what next? Next is now we establish the secondary structural topology. Can we get inter sheets or inter strands the distances? If we fix these distances, then we are all set for a structural determination of these long elongated fibrillar structure that we have. So, for that I said PDSD is also good enough because that gives you long range correlation. Some of these distances we have to measure using PDSD, but in the next class I am going to show you how what else we can use for measuring the, the long range distances, but PDSD is good enough for giving you long range distance. You can see 107 to V97 these kind of distances you can even get it from PDSD here 100 to 117 the long range distances can emerge from carbon carbon correlation and that fix us measuring uh, or uh, getting the topological arrangement of these beta strands how they will be arranged. That is how <coughs> we can generate a structural model of any fibril. Okay. So, with this I am going to stop it here today and in the next class we will be taking uh, we will be taking the idea of how we are going to use these structural information to getting the due de novo structure of this difficult protein system whether they are amyloid fibers or membrane protein in their native state or, or the native setting. So, I, I hope to see you in the next class. Thank you very much.